In this video, I am going to talk about the bus controller as part of my basic 286 build. And I'm going to start with this diagram that I showed last time as we got into the clock generator. And that clock generator is the far chip to the left. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about this bus controller. So it's an 82C288 bus controller. And the specific chip that I am using is from UMC. So it's a UM82C288 bus controller. I could not find much for documentation with it, just like the last video on the UMC stuff. So I am going to reference one of Intel's data sheets on their uh, military grade uh, 288, but I think it will, will suffice as far as signals and things such as that. Uh, this chip comes in a DIP20. It's a ceramic 20-pin DIP or a SER DIP, I guess, is how it's labeled. And if I look at the basic functionality here, you can kind of see what's coming in on the left side and what do we have on the right side. So you can see that I'm taking in some of these common signals I've been using, S0, S1, MIO, clock. And then over to the right, I am going to have outputs that tell me some important things. Things that I'm going to be most concerned with for now are that I am doing memory read or memory write. So it's going to give me a nice signal that just says the processor is doing a memory read or it's doing a memory write. Or an I.O. read, I.O. write, or I'm acknowledging the processor is acknowledging an interrupt. And I think that might be my next video is to get into the interrupt controller uh, that I'll be using in my system. I have a bunch to learn on that, so that uh, might be a little bit down the road. Uh, there's also control output logic coming out of this. Uh, there's a data transmit or receive, so I'll know if I am trying to send or receive data by the processor. That's going to help me when I get to my data transceivers so that I know which direction uh, I should be allowing the signals to go from A to B or B to A. And I'll show you that coming up here shortly. And then also a data enable, should I be letting anything through those transceivers? Uh, address latch enable, should I be latching the, the current values on the address bus into those latches? And then there's a master cascade enable, and that's one I for sure am not going to be using, but I think that has to do with if I have more than one of these uh, bus controllers, then I might have one that's a master and have it cascade out to the others, uh, whatever commands it needs to be cascading. I don't know anything about that. All I know is for now, I'm not using it. Uh, on my build, this chip is located right here. So the upper left breadboard, it's the far right IC that I'm going to be using. On my previous build, much of the functionality that is part of this bus controller, I had kind of just built my own and put it in this PSOC. And I had built logic that looked like this. So you can see to the left, I'm taking in things like S0, S1, MIO, and the COD, INTA. Um, those four signals I used quite a bit along with address 19 to help me understand am I reading ROM, am I reading RAM, or am I writing to RAM. I'm not going to need much of that anymore moving forward. I'm still going to use this PSOC for a while until I, I kind of get a design settled down a little bit. Uh, but you're going to see that my, my PSOC logic is going to be, at this point, really simple compared to what you see here on the screen. Uh, and what's on the screen is simple, but it's going to be even simpler. Here are the inputs to this chip. You'll notice that on the clock, it is on the falling edge of the clock where the inputs are sampled and the outputs will change. Also have S0, S1, and MIO. I've talked about those in previous videos. MIO helps me understand is the processor uh, trying to work with memory or with I.O. at that point uh, within that type of a bus cycle. And then the MIO plus S1 plus S0 really give me detail like am I doing an I.O. read, I.O. write, memory read, or memory write. Previously I've shown this table and what you'll notice that really the difference is uh, I had included this COD int A. Really that is going to help me differentiate between two things. If I looked at, oh, let's just say a memory read over here, I've got a 101 is a memory read, 
and I can see here I have a 101 memory read, but I also down here have a 101 memory read. Well, the difference is, am I doing instruction or am I doing data? And so the difference there is the value of this. Um, and it doesn't appear that this specific bus controller needs to look at the COD int A, and they might assume that we're looking at that elsewhere, or maybe that's part of de decode logic that's outside of what this chip is going to do. But it's going to look at MIO, S1, S0 to understand the type of bus cycle so that it can give us those right uh, proper enables coming out of this chip. Uh, then there is this multi-bus mode select. I am not going to be using multi-bus. So I'm going to be able to just kind of set this low. It says when it's low, it's basically not going to use multi-bus. It's going to optimize the controller for short bus cycles, which is essentially what I'm doing at this point. I do notice here that it talks about a strapping option. Uh, really, my understanding of all that means is that this is a setting that is taken into account when the system starts up or when it's bootstrapped, and it's not intended to be changed dynamically. So when the system fires up, this is going to set it. I'm going to I'm going to tie it low and uh, not use multibus at any point. Then we have command enable latched. And I'm going to just take out of that 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 can be tied to VCC if this specific 288 is going to do all the transfers. I only have one 288 that I'm putting in here, so yes, that is the case. So I am going to go ahead and tie that to VCC. Then there's a command delay. I'm not going to worry about this command delay at this point. It just says I can take that to ground if no delays are required before starting, starting commands, which is what I'm going to do. And then there's a ready signal, and that ready is just going to come from the chip I talked about last time, which is that clock generator. And it had an output that is this ready signal. Uh, as far as this multibus is concerned, here's a diagram that I had found that maybe, maybe just shows an example where there's multiple 288s. And in addition to that, you'll notice that there's this arbiter chip just down to the right a little bit of those. I'm not using multibus, so I'm not going to have an extra 288. I'm not going to have this arbiter. Uh, this diagram also shows an M80288, and if anybody knows what that is, let me know. I cannot find anything on it. I have a hard time believing it's a typo because the other 288s are listed as M82C288. Maybe it's a typo, but I don't know what an M80288 is doesn't matter I don't have one and I'm not using multibus so I'm just gonna kind of ignore it and pretend I didn't see it here are previous diagrams that I've also taken a look at as a reminder I'm focused on this uh, what's considered a basic configuration which is the diagram to the lower right that's a bit larger you can compare that to the diagram in the upper left which is labeled as a multibus system and really what you're going to see when you get up to this multibus system is in addition to the processor, you've got the 288 bus controller, which I'm going to have one of those, but then you also have this arbiter. And you're going to then also find that you might have multiples of these 288. So I might have more of those in my system. So I'm not going to worry about having multiples and I'm not going to worry about this arbiter. I'm going to stick with this configuration over here. Uh, as far as outputs then, if I fed in all of those inputs uh, correctly, there is an output that is an interrupt acknowledge. I think in the next video I'm going to try to get in and talk through the interrupt controller. It's brand new territory for me, so we'll see what I learn and what I can share. Uh, and again, with all of this, as I'm going through this, I'm learning as I go. And if any of you have uh, feedback or, or you're seeing something that I'm not catching or have suggestions, recommendations, uh, please do let me know. Other things though coming out of this chip, we have an address latch enable, and that tells me it controls the address latches used to hold an address. So that's just going to tell me when I need to latch my address, my address latches. It's, it's that easy. Uh, so that's great. Master cascade enable, I don't care about. Uh, I, I do not have a master um, interrupt controller that, that it talks about for last, latching. Maybe uh, this will come into play for me later, but I don't think it will at this point. Um, 
This seems to be a more complex uh, configuration than what I'm getting into. I could be wrong though. When I get into the interrupt controller, maybe it is expecting that even with a single interrupt controller. Um, so I'll, I'll hold judgment on how I'm going to use that one for now. But uh, as of today, I'm just going to say I'm not using this MCE. Then there's a data enable. It controls when data transceivers are connected to the local bus. So should I turn on those transceivers for data? Uh, DTR, am I transmitting or receiving on that data bus? Uh, so those two signals are going to make my life really easy, which you'll see coming up here shortly. And then I've got four more that tell me, am I writing, uh, am I reading, and am I doing it for I.O. or memory? So I.O. write, I.O. read, memory write, memory read. And those are all active lows. So it's just going to send me out my active low signals that I can connect to my ROM, RAM, I.O. type of devices for those output enable types of signals, which is great. And as a reminder, in build number one, I did that in my PSOC. I was doing that type of functionality. Now I don't need it because it's going to be here. So I guess when I get to my design tool, I've laid out this chip, this 288 that looks like this. And this is how I'm going to connect it initially. I'm using a whole bunch of these um, basically net ID little uh, flags here that are just simply showing that rather than running the wires or the connections all over my schematic for now. Later, as things settle down a bit, I'll, I'll try to connect things up and make it look nice. But I at least I wanted to, to walk through this. So ready will come in, clock will come in. Uh, that clock again, I'm going to have a resistor there. Uh, there. Back in my previous video, I had mentioned that uh, that clock line should have a resistor somewhere in this 10 to 74 ohm range, so I'll get a resistor put in there. S1 is going to come in, and then all, and S0 over to the right. We've got MIO over to the right, and then I just have DTR, DEN, MWTC, MRDC, IORC, IOWC. Okay, so that's a whole lot of abbreviations, but those are those signals I'm going to use to control the rest of my circuit. And so I'll start here with the address latches. I don't have anything wired up here on the address latches yet except for LE, which is basically this load enable. So when should I load the latches? Well, that I'm going to now connect to this uh, ALE right here. So this ALE is just going to kind of come on down and connect there like so. And that's the same one across all of these. So I've got that like that. Uh, then when it comes to my uh, data transceivers, I've got two things that I'm going to be able to use. And one is the DTR. So I can see DTR is up here. So I'm going to be able to bring this DTR signal down and connect it over to these two. Uh, then I've got this DEN, and I'll be able to connect it over to these two. So really what I'm starting to get out of this is, okay, I know the direction now of my transceivers and I know whether or not they should be outputting. Um, this is pretty darn easy. So this chip is doing all of this for me. So I'm just connecting these signals and it's, it's doing the logic internally. So that is great. Uh, if I keep building this out, then I have also got on my a schematic a pair of ROMs and a pair of RAMs and if I come look at uh, maybe up top is my ROM first of all I'm still going to use and if you watch my previous videos I talk about how I use BHE on the upper byte and I use A0 on the lower byte chip for the CE the chip enable and so that's going to stay the way it is uh, for ROMs, I'm going to make them read only by tying the write enable, which is an active low. I'm going to tie it high, so I'm never going to write to the ROMs. But now, if I want to enable the ROMs, I'm just going to use the ROM output enable. And you don't see ROM output enable over here yet. And I'm going to show you, I'm running that still through my PSOC to get ROM output enable. And I'll show you why just momentarily. If I come down to my RAM, I am using, again, BHE and A0 for my chip enable. And then for output enable, I'm using RAM output enable. 
And uh, similar to the ROM output enable above, I'll show you why I am running that through the PSOC instead of connecting something directly to this bus controller. But then I also can see that the write enable for these chips for the RAM is controlled by this MWTC. So I've got MWTC up here and that is going to go ahead and connect from up there over to this MWTC. Uh, and then I've got my, my actual PSOC. And if I look at that PSOC, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to bring address line 19 in from the processor. And then I also need MRDC. And so MRDC is right here. So I'm going to bring that in. And I think I'm also bringing in MWTC, which this diagram doesn't show, but I'm pretty sure I have that on there. Uh, so it'll be something that'll sit up here like so. And then coming out of this, I will have a RAM output enable and a ROM output enable along with these three LEDs so that I can just put up a quick indicator that shows me am I reading RAM, am I writing RAM, or am I reading ROM. Now the logic that I'm putting into that PSOC looks like this. And I probably need to just erase some of this uh, mess I've got on the screen. So let me do that real quick. And so now if I look at the logic here, which is sitting inside of this PSOC. So uh, I'm using that inside of here. You can see I'm bringing in address 19. And that's the line that's going to tell me, am I in RAM or ROM? So if address 19 is a 0, I'm in RAM. If it's a 1, I'm in ROM. Um, as a reminder, my build, you've got a meg of memory. I'm cutting it in half. And I'm saying RAM is the bottom half, and ROM is the top half. And it's address 19 that gives me that clear cut of knowing which I'm in. And then along with that, I want to know, am I reading or writing? And so I've got one NAND gate. If address 19 is a 1 and MRDC is a 0, I know that I am doing, in other words, this was active low. If this was an active low, I know that uh, I am doing a ROM read. And so I'm bringing in address 19. That brings in a 1. If this is low, I've inverted it. This is the B version. That'll be a 1. Uh, 1 and 1 NANDed is a 0. So now I've got my active low for my ROM enable. And I've got an inverted signal to run an LED. Uh, down here now, if I'm not A19 equals 1, in other words, I'm A19 equals 0, which you see here, and again, I've got an incoming MRDC that is a low. That'll give me a high here since um, I have basically inverted it. MRDC, this is the inverted version. So both of these, uh, A19 is also the inverted version that I brought in over here. Uh, so that'll give me a 1 and a 1. I'll then say that, okay, that's a 1. I'll NAND it. I'll get a 0 out of that. And now I've got my RAM output enable. So I've got my output enable for the ROM and the RAM. And that's what I was pointing out over here on these two. And then up here on these two. So those are my enables. And really all I'm doing is address decoding there. I'm not doing anything uh, beyond that. And the reason I am doing it in the PSOC is I know all this address decoding is going to change as I, as I work on I.O. and other things. And I don't want to keep rewiring uh, different logic chips. Uh, and then I also have this write coming in. Um, all I'm doing is inverting it so that if it's active low, I'm going to go ahead and uh, if it comes in low, which would be an active low, I'm going to invert it and turn on an LED. So kind of a pointless thing there, but I just wanted to have all my, my LEDs coming out of this PSOC together. So I've got one, two, three LEDs. That's about it. Uh, so if I uh, kind of back up for a second and I erase all of this junk on the slide, you know, I've got this chip here, the 288. I'm connecting some of the signals over to ROM and RAM. It's helping me control my 
uh, data transceivers and also my address latches. I'm taking the output of that along with an A19 signal to help me figure out should I output my ROM or my RAM for their output enables. Uh, and that's all starting to get glued together. It's all coming together. And again, if I look at what's going to be inside of my PSOC, really the only thing that I'm doing is two NAND gates, two, two input NAND gates. So I could easily put on a single quad two input uh, NAND gate chip on my breadboard and uh, get this functionality covered. So really, really simple here. I just don't know where the future is going to take me as far as this is concerned. So we'll see where that ends up. So I think that's about it for this video. A lot of stuff I don't know yet here, and this is going to take some testing. If anybody's catching things, if you've worked with this, uh, with some of these signals before, and, and you're seeing something I'm not quite looking at uh, the right way, please drop me a note. Let me know. Otherwise, I'll get in and start experimenting and see how this works out. I think on the next video, I will then talk about the next chip over here, which is an 82C59 interrupt controller and see what I can learn about it and share with you. Because I would eventually like to have maybe a PS2 keyboard um, that I can connect in and I'll have to obviously work with pulling that data and dealing with an interrupt because I'm going to want that to be interrupt driven. Um, but that would be my probably my first interrupt driven type of device that I wanted to process some code for as a PS2 keyboard if I can make that work. But I also am waiting for another I.O. type of chip to come in uh, for my system. And that'll be yet in another video at a later date. So thanks for watching. I appreciate uh, all of the feedback and the uh, suggestions and questions and comments. So keep them coming. Thanks. Mm -hmm.